thought I'd give you folks a tour of the new Meteor House edition of the Song of Kwasin, which uh, came out in December 2015. Um, this is the first standalone edition of the book. Um, the novel was first published in the collection Gods of Opar from Subterranean Press in 2012. Uh, this is obviously the the novel which I co-authored with uh, Philip Azay Farmer. It is the third volume in the Kokarsa series, <clears throat> follow, uh, following Hadon of Ancient Opar and Flight to Opar. So this is uh, the paperback edition. There's also a uh, hardcover edition available from the Meteor House website. Um, the hardcover is a limited edition, whereas uh, this paperback is a trade edition that should be around for, for quite a while. Um, so, to begin, uh, it has a beautiful epic cover art by artist Bob Eggleton. Um, this is the same cover art that was on Gods of Opar. It illustrates a scene from the novel, uh, The Song of Kwasin. Uh, that's, that's Kwasin right there, in fact. Um, so that's that's fantastic. We wanted to, to use this again because it, the art is just so so wonderful. Um, Bob Eggleton also did this this interior frontispiece of uh, of Kwasin. That's Kwasin with the Axe of Victory, which he inherited from Paga in um, Hadon of Ancient Opar, the first volume in the series. Uh, this is pretty much exactly how I picture. Kwasin looking. So that's fantastic. <clears throat> so this one si edition is signed. Um, if you order it from Meter House, they still have some signed copies of the paperback. Um, if you order it from Amazon, it will not be signed. I've got a list here of the series, the Kokarsa series. Here's the table of contents. We put a lot of extras in this uh, edition. Uh, a lot of stuff that wasn't in uh, the limited edition of Gods of Opar. Um, put a lot of work into it. Um, I'm very pleased with how it turned out. I'll go over that material individually here. Got the dedications dedicated to Edgar Rice Burroughs and H. Ryder Haggard. I uh, have a great new introduction to the novel by Paul De Filippo. Um, it's a one of one of my uh, favorite authors, actually. So that was a high honor to get that. Um, and then I wrote a new uh, preface to the Meteor House edition, talking about the background of the series, um, b background of the novel in particular, and it's had a, a very um, peculiar uh, publish publication history. Um, it uh, almost wasn't written. Uh, Phil Farmer had started writing it back in the nineteen early nineteen or mid excuse me mid nineteen seventies, uh, and then stopped to pursue other um, publishing projects that he was working on. Um, and he always intended to get back to the book, but he never did. And uh, after he retired, that's when he granted me permission to complete his unfinished manuscript based on his his outline. So there's a lot of good information in there that I go over. Also got a uh, story so far synopsis of Hadon of Ancient Opar and Flight to Opar to get you caught up on the series if you haven't read it for a while or if you just haven't read it and want to just read this one. Um, Got some fantastic maps by Charles Berlin, who's also done some other farmer illustration in the past. Just a sample there. These were newly commissioned uh, for Gods of Opar, actually. And this map has never appeared. This map is actually specific to this novel. The other ones were appeared in the other... Uh, previous novels in the series. We got chapter one here. Phil was known for having great opening lines to his novels and 
he, this is, these are in his words, he wrote this part of the manuscript. The opening line is, The strongest man in the world came puffing over the top of the hill and met a god. So, classic farmer. And it's quite a long novel. Goes on for... Doo -doo -doo -doo. 329 pages, and then we've got a 20,000 word bonus novella, Kwasin and the Bear God. This was a, a story that I wrote based on a, a fragmentary unused outline for the Song of Kwasin that I found shortly before Phil passed, and um, was actually able to take some words from his notes too and use that in one scene for, for uh, the dialogue of a priestess um, in the story. So that is a, a missing adventure of, uh, a lost adventure of Kwasin that takes place um, in between chapter one and chapter two of the Song of Kwasin. So that's quite a long, it's a novella, full novella. And then we get to the addenda. So addendum one, we've got the world of Kokarsa begins with the Kokarsan calendar. It's a short little piece uh, taken from Philip A. Farmer's notes on how the Kokarsan calendar was set up and the gods and goddesses that made up the names of the months. There's an article on the plants of Kokarsa. Phil did a ton of world building for this series, even though he only you know wrote those two books and then had this third one planned and begun. Um, he did a you know kind of a Tolkien-esque amount of world building. So I, appropriately, I have a guide to Kokarsa. Um, this is an updated version of the guide that was originally published in the Titan Books edition of Hadon of Ancient Opar. Um, this is expanded. It was expanded again in Flight to Opar to encompass both of the first two novels. This version encompasses all three of the first all, <clears throat> the first three novels. So uh, we've got cast of characters, people and tribes, religion and folklore, and geography and localities. And then we come to addendum two. That's Philip is a farmer's notes and correspondence. I got notes on the Kokarsa series. I got, actually got these great scans directly from Phil's notes. It uh, might not be le legible on the screen here, but they are legible on the print editions. Um, so, giving you some background on how he created the series. Um, there's actually that creation myth that uh, I used this as part of dialogue in uh, the Kwasin and the Bear God. Um, there's the Kokarsan syllabary. I was very happy when I found that among Phil's files because it allowed me to sync up the names that I had to create for the novel or transcribe from the Kokarsan tablets, if you will. Um, it has the, the glyphs and the syllables uh, from the Kokarsan language, so I was able to make a lot of the names very authentically Kokarsan, linguistically speaking. Then we get to Philip is a farmer's original outline. So if you want to see what Phil originally plotted for the book and compare it to the novel, now's your chance. It's right here, uh, right from Phil's typewriter. We've got the scans reprinted. Um, it follows very closely, actually, what the final novel turned out to be. With with a few modif modifications, Phil wanted me to change certain uh, things about the end of the, the novel, uh, and there were a few details I had to fill in here and there. Um, there's the the Great Ziggurat, the Tower of Great Tower of Ko and Rezu, which Bob Eagleton has also uh, interpreted here on the cover. I think that's a really great, great version. He really knocked it out of the park with this illustration. 
Um, got some more notes here, and then we've got Philip is a Farmer's alternate outline. This was an outline that I said I discovered um, shortly before Phil passed, um, and it contained a little bit uh, of material that was not in, in the outline that I used to write the, no the novel. Um, so there's kind of a little lost adventure, like I said, that took place between chapter one and two. And that's what, what this is. There were certain other details that did not sync up um, with the, the other outline um, and, and other detail, details that were already established in the series. So it was otherwise unusable, but it was usable for the purposes of that lost adventure, which fit very nicely. And we've got correspondence on the Cocarsa series. Uh, a couple of Egg Rice Burroughs fans and scholars, Frank Breckel and John Harwood, wrote a um, basically a long monograph called Heritage of the Flaming God. And that's the monograph that, the art, uh, long essay that uh, inspired Phil Farmer to create Cocarsa in the Cocarsa Ancient Opar series. Um, so I included some uh, correspondence in here a nice little letter here where Phil is writing, they they shared a lot of information back and forth uh, when he was creating the series and uh, he's kind of responding to their, their correspondence and uh, pointing out what he's doing with the series. And he signs it, K.O.R. Phil, which is the Bar Egress Burroughs fans know is a Barsoomian phrase. So then I've got the acknowledgments here. That's pretty much it. There's a ad, I think, in the back here for more Meteor House titles. And you got the back cover here with some nice blurbs. Um, so there you have it, the Song of Kwasin, the long-awaited third novel of the Kokarsa series. So thanks for letting me share that.